Greetings, builders! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! After the success of the Lego Movie, and that sequel hook ending, another instalment was clearly on the cards. That long prophesied sequel is today's subject. The Lego Movie 2, the second part. Released in 2019, the LEGO Movie 2 moves the story on by a few years, and takes us from the city of Bricksburg and the surrounding regions, all the way to the very stars themselves. Along the way, we meet new friends, and new enemies, although this time, telling which is which might not be quite as easy. And it's another genuine family film, as it was rated G in the US, and U in the UK. So hold on to your bricks, mind your feet, and get ready to blast all the way to the Sistar system as we discover that there's more than meets the eye in this sisterly sequel, The Lego Movie 2. We pick up right where we left off, as Emmett attempts to charm the invading Duplonians, which goes about as well as you'd expect. The Duplonians are ravenous for anything shiny and colourful, and they ransack Bricksburg to feed their insatiable appetites. Cut to five years later. The remains of Bricksburg has become Apocalypse Burg, a post-apocalyptic wasteland in the vein of the Mad Max films, which still has a coffee shop, and a somewhat thriving community. What's that about? Having a clue, mate. I'm as confused as you are. Emmett's been having a nightmare of late. When the clock strikes 5.15, all of creation will be sucked into oblivion as our Marmageddon claims reality itself. But there's no time to dwell on that, as a new invader is scanning Apocalypseburg. And worse, it easily defeats anything they throw at it. That is, until Batman takes his turn. <sighs> These family-friendly Batman variants. It's so hard to keep the orphan-to-gun-violence thing straight. But hey. But Emmett's compassion proves to be the undoing of his friends, who are whisked off in a spaceship, and taken to the court of Queen Whatever Wanabi. And now it falls to our hero to rescue his friends and save the universe again. Which would end in predictable disaster again, until Emmett is saved at the last possible moment by Rex Danger Vest. Yes, Rex Danger Vest. Galaxy defending, raptor training, archaeologist, cowboy, space hero. And he's here to teach Emmett what growing up is all about. Oh, but we'll get to that. The captured party are taken to a space spa. And a terrible truth is revealed about Lucy. Long before she was wild style, or ever fought for the freedom of the world, Lucy was a singer in a popular band, and had colourful hair which she ended up colouring black when the world was divided. The Rexelsia lands on a jungle world. A feral and dangerous place. But the jungle is right next to... Suburbia? And both parties are subjected to the most evil force imaginable. Pop music. <sighs> nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Pop music's alright. Got a lot of people through some very tough times in the 80s. Of course, these days, well, it's complicated, that's all I'll say. Let's just move on. But after a masterful escape, and a detour via planet Duplo, Emmett and Lucy are reunited. The not-evil queen plays hard to get with Batman, which actually works. And so the plan is laid out. Rex's plan to avert our Marmageddon, is to destroy the Wedding Temple, putting a stop to the wedding of Batman and the Queen. And Lucy makes her way to face down the Queen's right hand, General Mayhem, while Emmett and Rex make for the top of the Wedding Temple. But the real truth is that the Queen wasn't evil after all, and the plan to stop our Marmageddon will actually bring it about. And by the hand of Brikowski, is everything undone. Keep in mind though, 
This is the revelry of an adolescent and his younger sister who couldn't get along and now have to face the consequences. But before that, we learn the truth of a radical Emmett Extreme. Yes, Rex was Emmett once before spending five years under the dryer in the basement, or on the desert planet Undar of the Dryar system as he terms it, waiting for someone to save him until finally deciding to save himself, because that's all he had in the universe. So he built a time-travelling fist-shaped spaceship and saved himself from certain doom. But now he seeks to propagate his own existence by exiling our Emmett to the same fate. But Lucy is not so easily defeated and she flies to Emmett's side, bringing new hope in her wake. The mechanics of time travel sort this naughty little paradox out. Now time paradoxes get very complicated very quickly, so I'll try and keep this simple. By saving Emmett here, Lucy has ensured that Emmett doesn't become Rex out of necessity, thus Rex's time stream is redundant, and he dramatically winks out of existence piece by piece. Of course, this creates a paradox of its own about who saves Emmett's house ship from disaster earlier on, but as I say, these things get complicated very quickly, and if we all dwell on it too long, we may all go cross-eyed from confusion. Absolutely. Live action denouement! And so, our movie ends with the end of sibling rivalry. <sighs> if only it were that simple, you know what I mean? Anyway, that was the Lego Movie 2. And you know something? I'm gonna put this one into my house of love. The name Lego actually comes from the Danish words Leggut or play well, at least according to Lego's website. And this sentiment is reflected very much in the movie. The central theme, outside of the example of Rex Danger Vest, is that you have to learn to play well with others, even if they seem to be evil, because they may just be bad at communicating. But let's get to the performances. And with Chris Pratt pulling double duty as both Emmett and Rex, there's an awful lot of him acting against himself here, but he manages well with this difficult acting challenge. Elizabeth Banks' Lucy, formerly Wildstyle, still has an awful lot of growing up to do herself, and she does it over the course of the movie. And Will Arnett, who was such a revelation in the Lego Batman movie, takes his Batman to a new level here, at least among family-friendly interpretations. Of the support, Richard Ayoade and Ralph Fiennes are as dry as ever, as they are essentially the same role mirrored, Ayoade as the Queen's butler, and Fiennes as Alfred Pennyworth, and Noel Fielding is enjoyable as a sparkly vampire, even if you don't really approve of that sort of thing. The flow of the movie is necessarily choppy, as we flip between the two scenarios of Emmett learning how to burn and Queen Whatever Wanabi wanting to unite the tribes of Bricksburg and Sistar with a political marriage. But the biggest thing about this movie is its message, because while Rex Danger Vest is superficially cool in that adolescent way, he's ultimately a force for alienation, being that breaking up your little sister's creations purely out of some misplaced belief in girl cooties really comes across to me as a jerk move. Also, this movie is much more of a musical than its predecessor, and if you've no love or patience for singing in your family adventure, then you're gonna have a bad time. But in my own opinion, the songs aren't really all that intrusive, and the intentionally and doubly misleading Not Evil, which introduces Queen Whatever Wanabi, really does its best to convince you that she's not so secretly evil, and just really bad at pretending. Overall then, it's not better than the first one, and it's not a rehash of it either. The second half of the story is still an acceptable allegory, and another fantastic family film for the toy that's a tool for infinite imagination, and learning to leg gut with others. So if everything can't be awesome all of the time, there's one awesome thing that you can't deny, that they took Lego, which could be anything, and made two great original movies from it. I've been Funky Monkey wishing you life, love and creativity. And here's a House of Love top tip for you, never grow up. So long, folks!
Hey folks, Funky again. If you like the video, you know where that button is. Well, why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!